What the hell just happened? That is what every Bengals fan was asking themselves last Sunday when the Ravens defense completely and utterly dismantled the Cincinnati offense in Cincinnati. 170 passing yards, only 77 total team rushing yards, and five turnovers by Andy Dalton ensured that the Bengals would get shut out in their opening game for the first time in 38 years. So I ask again, what the hell happened? How did an offense with so much firepower get so thoroughly dominated? Well, the answer to that is simpler than you think. The Ravens went into this game looking to fight fire with fire, and they made sure to bring a flamethrower. We knew going into this season that the Bengals offensive line was not going to be very good. You don't lose Andrew Whitworth and Kevin Zeitler and somehow expect to get better up front. But never did we expect it to get this bad. If you want to know what went wrong in Cincinnati, look no further than the trenches. The Bengals could not run the ball all day long and their only big plays of the afternoon were courtesy of Gio Bernard basically doing it all by himself. He had the longest reception and the longest rush of the day. Joe Mixon had no room to work, neither did Jeremy Hill, and other than that one long run from Bernard, he could barely get past the line of scrimmage. A futile running game led to third and long situations, and as you would probably expect, a bad run blocking line is usually a pretty bad pass protecting line too. Terrell Suggs, Brandon Williams, and the rest of the Ravens front seven chewed right through the Bengals line and routinely sacked and pressured Andy Dalton. I saw a lot of bad offensive line play last weekend when my own Texans gave up 10 sacks to the Jaguars, and Cincinnati's performance was almost as bad. Pretty much the only time the Bengals could move the ball was either when the pass rush was slowed down by play action, which gave Dalton enough time to feed the ball to AJ Green, or when Dalton identified man coverage and was able to get it out quickly to his very talented receiving core, again focusing on AJ Green's ability to win immediately off the snap. Other than those few moments though, it was a total mess. And I do want to give credit where credit is due. I don't mean to just say that the Bengals offense is bad and that's the end of it. This Ravens defense is legit. They made a lot of plays in this game that, to be honest, it wouldn't matter what Andy Dalton did or what the offensive line did. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do to stop a great player from making a great play. It's what they're paid to do. I'll give a couple examples of that, most notably Dalton's first turnover of the game in the first quarter. The Ravens, based on their tendencies at least, can be in one of three different defenses based on this pre-snap look, or at least three different obvious defenses, either cover two, cover two man, or cover six. There are plenty of other defensive looks they can get into fairly easily from this alignment with post-snap coverage rolls and all that, but in terms of what the quarterback is IDing on the field, all of these possible coverages are what are referred to as a mofo look, middle of field open. In a two deep pre-snap shell, typically this seam right up the middle is vulnerable to things like post routes, dig routes, slice routes, and anything else that exploits that deep middle of the field. In a cover six, that middle of the field is still open, but to a lesser degree because you've got quarters coverage on one side and a deep half zone on the other. So really you just wanna get your receiver inside of that deep half safety and stay away from the quarter side. Either way, no matter whether it's a cover two or cover six, a backside post route works here. And of course, AJ Green is running a post route on this play, which is a perfect way to attack a Ravens defense that is indeed running a cover six. The Bengals are running play action here to try to suck these inside linebackers up to the line of scrimmage because that would then vacate the throwing lane for Dalton to hit Green on the post. It's a great play design and a great play call on this defense, and theoretically it should work. But while the Bengals made a great play call, the Ravens just made a great play period. This will linebacker, Patrick Owasso, IDs the fake and starts bailing out into his zone, and while he's bailing, he starts to drift outside to move with the running back towards the flat. And the play is designed this way to do just that. They want that Will linebacker drifting away from the throwing lane to clear the way for Green. Owasso sees the ball in the air behind him though, and in a split second he elevates, reaches behind him, and is able to knock the ball into the air where Brandon Carr then picks it off. This was not a bad throw. It was not a bad read either. It was just a great defensive play by the linebacker, and really there's not much that Dalton could have done about it. Sometimes defenders just make great plays, and this is one of those times. A similar thing happened late in the second quarter. Dalton sees a blitz coming from the slot, and he makes a good read to try to get the ball out quickly to his hot receiver for what likely would have been a first down. However, Terrell Suggs, in all of his experience playing against Dalton, recognizes Dalton's eyes going to his hot receiver, and he jumps up into the throwing lane knowing that the throw was coming out immediately to the hot. He timed it perfectly, and the ball deflected right off of his helmet and was intercepted once more. 
I'll say it again, Dalton made the right read here, Suggs just made a better play. It just happens. Later in the fourth quarter, again the Ravens made another great play because they know Dalton so well. This time it was Jimmy Smith's turn, of course. He's in stack coverage here on AJ Green on third and four, and he can just feel the back shoulder throw coming. Dalton and Green have relied on this throw as their bread and butter to move the chains for seven years. And why wouldn't they? He's a big, lanky receiver with a huge catch radius, so they use his ability to box people out to get free first downs basically every game. Smith has seen this song and dance on third down season after season by now, so he knows it's coming. As Dalton releases the ball to put it on Green's back shoulder, Smith is already turning his head to look for it. Now, normally the back shoulder fade is about as indefensible a pass as there is in football, but if you know it's coming and you can sell out completely to stop it, it can turn into a very easy interception just like that. Smith knew it was coming, so he sold out against it and he got the pick. I don't mind the play call and I don't mind the execution by Dalton and Green. Jimmy Smith had just seen so much of this over the years that he knew he could take the gamble and it paid off. So that's three of Dalton's five turnovers that were really more about the Ravens being good than the Bengals being bad. But believe me, Dalton is far, far from exempt from blame for this shutout. He is just as responsible, if not more responsible, for the failure of this offense than anyone else, even the offensive line. Whether it was missing Cody Core wide open down the sideline for a sure touchdown, or throwing a 50-50 ball to AJ Green that was so low that Green never even had a chance to get it, there were a lot of passes in this game that Dalton just flat out missed. He was out of sync with his receivers, his ball placement was erratic at best, it was just not a good performance at all. And yet, despite all of that, Dalton still would have had a chance to win this game if he did one thing, protect the ball in the red zone. He failed to do that from start to finish. Second quarter again, this was Dalton's second interception of the day, and I want to highlight two things on this play, one being Dalton not reading the field correctly, and two being the unbelievable instincts of CJ Mosley to get in position to pick this ball off. I want to show you what Dalton saw first in the Ravens defense, and then we'll get to Mosley. Dalton is seeing what looks like cover two man at first, then he sees the safety, Tony Jefferson, show a blitz off the edge. If he did blitz, that would make it man coverage across the board with Eric Weddle doubling AJ Green on the backside. Dalton changes the play with a little signal on his right hip, likely calling for the skinny post from Brandon LaFell into the hole vacated by the safety blitz. It's a good adjustment, but Jefferson isn't actually blitzing. What's important here though is that Mosley saw the signal when Dalton thought he was blitzing. Mosley knew his strong safety was showing blitz, and he saw Dalton adjusting to it with a signal to Brandon LaFell and Tyler Boyd. Putting two and two together, Dalton was calling for a route that would put one of his receivers in the area that would be theoretically vacated by Jefferson's blitz. For instance, this skinny post from LaFell who has a 4 inch height advantage over Ladarius Webb in coverage. You can even see when Dalton gives the signal, Mosley turns his head and looks directly at LaFell. He knows what's coming right then and there. And when he drops into coverage after the snap, again he looks directly at LaFell. The skinny post is coming right to him and he's just sitting on it the whole time. Dalton never sees Mosley waiting there patiently for the ball and it's an easy pick in the end zone. This is obviously phenomenal instinct and ball skills from Mosley to both read this play before the ball is even snapped and to come down with the interception, but Dalton has to see Mosley sitting there. As a quarterback, you can't just make one read pre-snap and follow it right off the edge of the cliff post-snap. That's how you get baited into picks. This is entirely on Dalton, even though Mosley did make a fantastic read. A seven-year veteran at quarterback should not make this throw. Third quarter now, this was Dalton's second red zone turnover. The Bengals are spreading the Ravens out here and forcing them to basically declare their defense before the snap. The main reason you go four wide from the gun as an offense is to take away the element of surprise. When everything is all spread out, it makes it really easy to see what the Ravens are doing, so Dalton should not have been surprised by this coverage. In this case, it's clearly man coverage across the board, and Eric Weddle is walked down to form an inside-out bracket on AJ Green as the double team. The only real wild cards here are the inside linebackers. It looks pre-snap as though Mosley is in man coverage on Gio Bernard, while Kamale Correa is sitting in a zone at the goal line to give inside help to Tony Jefferson, who's in man coverage on Tyler Eifert. However, Correa is also a potential blitzer up the middle, which brings us to factoring in Eifert as a hot read on this play. On the front side of the play, the Bengals are running a rub concept with Brandon LaFell providing the pick that springs Bernard free to the flat. That should be the main read on this play because at the very least it's a safe throw that can get a first down on third and two, and it has a great chance of also getting a touchdown. Tyler Eifert should only be the alert here against this defensive look as the hot receiver if Correa comes as a blitzer, 
because of Correa blitzes that would vacate the middle of the field for an easy touchdown to a 6-5 tight end. As a quarterback, when you see a linebacker like Correa sitting in this spot pre-snap with no one to cover man-to-man, -man, that usually means only one of two things. Either he's playing a shallow zone, or he's blitzing. That's it. Those are pretty much the only options unless it's something really exotic. And if he is playing a zone over the middle and he's giving that inside help to Jefferson, Tyler Eifert is no longer an option on this play. No matter how big he is and how good he is as a red zone receiver, you cannot, under any circumstances, throw that ball over the middle with a 6'3 linebacker sitting in the throwing lane. You just can't. It's not an option. So that's the read. If Correa blitzes, Eifert is open and you throw it to him high and inside for the touchdown. If he stays in his own, you throw it to Bernard low and away in the flat, also for a touchdown. The read begins and ends right there. So what does Dalton do? He sees Correa stay in that zone inside of Eifert, and then for some unknown reason he thinks to himself, eh, screw it, I can fit that ball in there. Then halfway through his release, he second guesses himself and pulls the ball down when he realizes how catastrophically bad that decision would be. Meanwhile, Gio Bernard is sitting wide open in the flat for the easiest touchdown Dalton could ever throw in his life, and by the time Dalton figures out he wasted three whole seconds on reading Correa and Eifert, it's too late to go to Bernard because Suggs is on top of him for the sack fumble. You can blame Cedric Abue for not protecting well enough and getting beat for the sack, but Dalton never should have still had this ball in his hands in the first place. It should have been out immediately once he read that Correa was staying home in his zone, and it should have been a walk-in touchdown for Gio Bernard. Andy Dalton is 100% to blame for this fumble, and nobody else. And until he learns to read the field after the snap and not just before the snap, this kind of stuff is going to keep happening. There's a big difference between the two, and it's the difference between a touchdown and a turnover. Again, for a seven-year veteran at quarterback who's been the starter from day one, this is flat out inexcusable. There is a reason why the so-called Dalton line exists. He's not a bad quarterback. In fact, I think he's a good quarterback. He'll have plenty of great games and play for a really long time, but Andy Dalton makes just enough mind-boggling mistakes at the worst possible times that you're always left questioning just how far the Bengals can really go. Elite quarterbacks, Super Bowl winning quarterbacks turn these red zone opportunities into touchdowns. They take advantage of big play opportunities whenever they appear, regardless of circumstances. If they spin out of a sack and have their eyes downfield and their feet set for a throw, they will find guys like Alex Erickson coming back to them on a scramble drill deep downfield, and they won't completely ignore them and then scramble out of bounds for a loss of yards. They'll complete that pass, move the chains, score on the next play, and win the damn game. Aaron Rodgers does it, Russell Wilson does it, Tom Brady does it, Drew Brees and Matt Stafford and Matt Ryan all do it too. But Dalton? The, the struggle is real. Yes, it is, Andy. Yes, it is. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. I'm ecstatic that the regular season is finally back and we can break down some games that actually matter for once. I wanted to get this episode out there before Thursday Night Football this week because I think it's important while you're watching the Bengals and Texans to understand what went wrong for Cincinnati last week and why those problems may or may not carry over into this week. Unfortunately for Dalton, Houston has just as many great pass rushers as Baltimore and his offensive line is still just as vulnerable. So to me, the only way the Bengals win this game is if their defense outplays the Texans defense. Neither offense is very good right now, so it's the other side of the ball that's going to have to make some plays for both of these teams. Field position, above all else, is going to win this game. I guarantee it. Now, before I go, I want to thank all of our new Patreon donors this week for keeping this channel running. You guys are really helping me to pursue YouTube as a full-time career and pay all my bills, and I will be eternally grateful to all of you. Thank you so much for donating. I'm going to be back in a couple of days with my full week two picks. For the record, I think the Bengals are going to win the Thursday game. But yeah, I'll see you all in a couple of days with more picks. Sit back, relax, enjoy the game. I'll see you later.